Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anita Lee, and I'm the Chief of Programming here at TIFF. I am delighted to welcome you to the world premiere of The Critic. Yes. We are pleased to present this film at the Visa Screening Room at the Princess of Wales Theatre and thank Visa for making this possible. We would like to thank our lead sponsor, Bell, our major sponsors, RBC, Bulgari, and Visa for their continued support. We would like to thank our government sponsors, the Government of Ontario, Telephone Canada, and the City of Toronto. This film is eligible for the People's Choice Award. You can vote for your favorite films at tiff.net. We would like to thank Culmination and United Talent Agency and Creative Artists Agency for providing us with this film. Thank you to the British Council for their very generous support. Set during the rise of fascism in pre-World War II England, this scintillating tale of ambition and deceit in the theater world stars Gemma Archerton and Ian McKellen as adversaries forced to take desperate measures to save their careers. Anand Tucker was born in Bangkok and raised in Hong Kong before moving to London, where he studied film at the University of Westminster. He has directed Hillary and Jackie, Shop Girl, and When Did You, do, when did you Last See Your Father, all of which played the festival, and Leap Year. The Critic is his latest film, and please welcome to the stage. Thank you so much, that was lovely. Um, hello, Toronto. <laughs> um, I hope you'll indulge me. Christ, it's a big theater, isn't it? Um, ah, um, indulge me for just a minute. Um, I had to write it down, so here we go. Um, so my hero, who is the legendary French manager of my team, the Arsenal, Arsène Wenger, once said, this is the serious bit, I take pride in the fact that people go home having felt that for 90 minutes today, life is beautiful. And that's it, basically. That's why professional football exists. He, <laughs> he also said, I think in England, you eat too much sugar and meat and not enough vegetables. And he's absolutely right about that. Both are true, but only one applies to the movies. And that's what makes this experience here so special. Without the energy and passion and commitment of a crowd, of the audience, of you, there's nothing. There's just the horrible emptiness of a terrible 3-0 loss on a wet Sunday afternoon to your arch nemesis Spurs. Um, anyway, unfortunately for all of you, to stretch this already shaky metaphor even further, I'm a really appalling football player, uh, but I do try really hard. So, thank you all so much for buying a ticket and coming here to see our film. This is my third time here at your incredibly special festival, and walking down King Street yesterday, it felt like the love and passion Toronto has for the movies is unrivaled anywhere in the world. And it's like... <laughs> the energy and passion you guys bring is just incredible. Um, but a movie is also a team game, only with a much bigger team. And this movie belongs to a remarkably dedicated group of people who love the cinema and sacrificed a lot to get it made, which I think is true of pretty much everyone who's brought their films here to your festival. Um, and I'd like to just very briefly bring a few of them up and then you'll get to ask us all some questions later. Um, Jolien Simmons, the indomitable producer who optioned the book Curtain Call over seven years ago. Uh, he's still standing. <laughs> Uh, Patrick Marber, our incredible Tony Award-winning writer, director of the stage, um, who Jolien had to lock up in a hotel room for a week to complete the final draft of uh, The Critic. Um, after, I don't know, how many years, Jolien? Uh, <laughs> Patrick. Um, Bill Kenwright. 
the extraordinary, remarkable Bill Kenwright, who can't be with us today, and David Gilbury, his indomitable partner, who read Patrick's script and unhesitatingly took what I can now safely tell them I thought was an absolutely insane gamble to get the movie made. Um, and they roped in Harry from Culmination uh, to raise every possible penny they could, so thank you to them. Um, I'd like to Bill, bring David Gilbury on. Um, They've been incredibly supportive partners creatively, and that's been a real joy. So thank you, David. And uh, thank you also to Mark Gordon, who couldn't be here. Andrew Canava, you're in the audience somewhere. UTA, CAA for everything you've done. Thank you. But above all, the movie belongs to a crazily talented cast, from uh, Romula Garay to Leslie Manville, who aren't here, from Alfie Enoch, the wonderful Alfie Enoch. <laughs> Alfie! Um, doesn't actually own a suit, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> uh, ben Barnes. <clears throat> Obviously, I only realize after we'd cast him that he's literally too fucking handsome. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Um, uh, Mark Strong, who can't be here, and then, of course, the absolutely sensational Gemma Arterton. Um, uh, and, of course, um, Ian McKellen. Um, but Ian's not here at the... Ian's not here. There will be a surprise later, but we'll come to that. Um, I guess for me, how the hell do you turn up on day one and tell Ian bloody living legend McKellen to, you know, do it again better? Uh, it's a bit like trying to tell Lionel Messi he needs to kick the ball better. Anyway, or indeed any of this remarkable uh, cast. Um, I'm so proud of this film, and I'm delighted that you at TIFF are going to bring it to life for the first time ever, anywhere in the world, by giving us the next 90 minutes of your life. And if you enjoy the film, please stay after the lights come up. There will be extra time, and even if we do lose 3-0 to Spurs, life will still be beautiful. So I hope you enjoy the film. And so there will be a Q&A after the film and a very, very special surprise. Enjoy. So now, without further ado, please join me in welcoming and congratulating director Anand Tucker. Thanks, thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for staying to the end. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just, uh, uh, yeah, I'm really overwhelmed. So thank you all so much. That was just an amazing experience um, to be with you all. Uh, before we just, I bring on the amazing cast, um, I just wanted to say a quick word. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the movie business right now. Our film uh, is an equity movie made independently with no studio money in, in England. But I think I speak on behalf of myself, uh, Patrick and all the cast that we stand absolutely <laughs> with all our fellow writers and actors in um, yes, the fight for a proper recompense so um, without further ado Patrick Marber whose beautiful script um, is the reason we're all here yeah. Stay there. Yeah. Uh, Alfie, are you there? Alfie Enoch Ben Barnes. Come on, Ben. Uh, and please give it up for Gemma Arterton. Um, and a we promised you a surprise. I'm sure you guessed what it is. Maybe. I don't know. It feels like we're missing someone. Are we? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I counted backstage. Right. I 
I don't know who or what. I don't know. Let's find out. We'll shuffle aside. It's the wonder. Thank you so much, Ian McKellen, for taking time out of your schedule in London. We know you're in a play in the West End. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. I just want to say how pleased I am to be making my debut at the uh, Princess of Wales Theatre. I've worked <laughs> the Theatre on the uh, the Royal Annex, uh, and uh, I was first in Toronto. Uh, in the last century, <laughs> the dying days of um, uh, the 1900s, uh, filming the first X-Men. And I'm sorry I can't be with you today. I'm on stage uh, eight times a week in London, and uh, the journey just wasn't possible. But I hope you've enjoyed the movie, and... Um... <laughs> Very much so. Very much so. I, I, there may be some people who think that the, the uh, festival had only asked the uh, the pretty members of the company. <laughs> no, I, I'm sure you know, uh, I was invited. And, and so, uh, again, I can't be. It's a great relief to know that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know you've got to all go on to your other responsibilities, and I'm so pleased that you offered to kick off our Q&A by answering a question for us. Okay. And the question that I wanted to ask you is, what drew you to the role of Jimmy Erskine? What intrigued you about him? Uh, that it was written by Patrick Marlowe. I, I'm lucky enough to make another uh, film uh, with Patrick, uh, and uh, I've admired his work on stage uh, enormously. Uh, and when he confided that he thought that uh, Jimmy, uh, the part in The Critic, was uh, one of the most achieved uh, of his writing, uh, I, I concurred, and uh, how could I resist? And then I met uh, Anand and uh, the producers, and once I realized who else was involved, um, no question, uh, I dropped everything. Uh, when we're very, very uh, glad. Gemma Arterton. <laughs> hey, look, guys, uh, Gemma Arterton <laughs> is one of the great performers. Uh, yeah. And it's filming. There was a day, oh, I'll never forget, when, when I, my character made hers uh, a bit weepy. And um, in the... Um, <laughs> First shot of the that Anna made. Uh, Jenna cried on cue. I was very impressed with this. I was very impressed when on the second take uh, she did the same thing, and on the third. And then when it came to my close-up, when Jenna is behind the camera and just providing the lines for me, no, she provided the whole performance and the tears again. Fell on cue. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, lest you worry, we didn't cry during making this movie. We laughed a lot, didn't we, John? We did. We had. We miss you so much, Ian. We miss and you. We miss you. But we had. We did have the beautiful and, uh, time. There, I know. And, and my boyfriend. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Ian. I get to kiss Alfie Eno. Agreed. Agreed. Well, thank you so much for giving us this time. Very much appreciate you doing it. And hello from everyone at TIFF. Thank you so much. Bye, Ian. Bye. Bye. Bye, Ian. <laughs> Thank you all. Maybe we'll go back and... Okay. We will now resume our normal programming.
<laughs> we can't follow that, can we? I know, Just... it's hard, I don't know. Um, but we'll try. So we have an opportunity to have a moment or two for some questions with our guests. As I mentioned, uh, if you have a question, all right, someone right down in front, um, we'll go ahead. Thank you, go ahead, please. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> Okay. Well, I think I think cash, the, so much cash, <laughs> cash, so much. Uh, the I question I mean, I think is about why Ben selected this film after he's very, very picky about his roles. I mean, I, th I think that the the gap, as you say, between making films is, you know, due to the sort of overwhelming rise in how extraordinary television has become over the last decade and how um, nuanced and, and full the opportunities become to explore characters. And I just wasn't seeing that on, honestly in, in film scripts and I was away filming a, a television show and the script for the critic came in, as Ian pointed out, it's written by Patrick Marber, so that's on the front cover. You get the title and that and you already want to say yes. And then you start, you get the, the little notes, the header notes that say the role of the critic is being played by C. Ian McKellen. You're like, well, I was already going to do it, but I guess <laughs> no, I, now I'm extra going to do it. And then you start reading and it was, you know, it, it is, it is, does have source material. So there is sort of like, there's a forethought gone into the sort of structure, of, I'm sure, but Patrick um, absolutely kind of made it his own story, really. And... And um, it was one of those scripts that you read in, in the time it takes to watch. The, you read it in even shorter, actually. I think it took me about an hour to, to read the entire script. And you, could, you have to know what's going to You have to know what happens with Nina. You have to know what happens with all of the relationships, with all of their dreams and their goals. And will their passions overwhelm them? Will there be anything to salvage at the end? And you have to know. And it, it read like it watches with all of the beauty and the, and the tension that you feel when you watch it. Um, and so, you know, I, I was just kind of desperate to be, be involved, really, and play a, a character with some love and hope in him. Thank you. Uh, one more question uh, down here, please. All right, I'm not sure we can do all of that, but the question is for everyone here. What was your favorite scene to shoot or are there to see fully realized? Maybe we'll start with our director. I love all the little babies. <laughs> <laughs> I love the scene with Gemma and Ian when um, she's just in pieces and they touch foreheads. I think that's beautiful. I love the scene with Mark and Ian uh, where he's literally the devil. I love the scene with Ben <laughs> and Mark. Um, I love the scene with Alfie and Ian at the... I mean, just, yeah. You can't ask me to choose. I know, I just... It was you go. Um, I really like the lamb chop scene. <laughs> <clears throat> because um, in that scene, two of my favorite actors in the world are just having this conversation... The guy who plays the opera critic, Hugh Morris, is a guy called Ron Cook, who I've worked with, I've known, known him for 30 years. He, was, he came and visited uh, my son the day he was born, because he was in one of my plays at the time. Oh, and wow. to see him and Ian, just as these two old guys, sort of down on their luck, um, I don't know, there's just something that I, I love. A vision of our future, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I sort of, yeah, I, I don't know, there's something about the sort of poverty and sadness of that scene uh, that I love. I mean, I love the whole film, but yes. that scene surprised me how much Ron and Ian got out of that scene. Gemma, go on. Oh, God. Um, uh, I think I was dreading, but then actually I ended up loving doing the end scene with Ian. Um, uh, because actually it was really fun and we were really, really playful together. Um, I, I mean, it's the end scene that I'm in, obviously. <laughs> There's loads of scenes after that. Um, uh, where she's really drunk and then kills her. 
Um, but we had a real good time doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to throw um, nuts and olives at Ian McKellen, which was <laughs> great fun. <laughs> <Yes>. Alfie. <laughs> um, God, again, difficult to say a, a, a favourite scene, but um, one that comes to mind is that wonderful scene between Ian and Gemma, I think it's the first time you go to the apartment, and I'm barely in the scene, I just go and sort of offer drinks. But there was something which was sort of true of my whole experience on it, so enjoyable about watching people as talented and as skilled and as wonderful as Gemma, as Ian, as Ben, as Mark Strong, Leslie Manfield, doing their work, and, and just, just to get to be part of that and to be in that environment, I think there was a lot of... Um, that was a gift. It was a, there was a lot of learning uh, for me, and, and yes, I will. Yeah, yeah, that's one. How about that? Ben, go on very quickly. You very quickly. Oh, um, I think my favourite part of the process was actually the rehearsal room. The the three days that we spent sitting around in uh, on those plastic chairs, sort of watching. Ian, uh, uh, with a loose leaf script with his notes on it, um, and at one point Patrick um, said, "You know, we've got bound copies of the most up-to-date version." And Ian was like, uh, "Ian kind of said, yes, but this one has my notes." Um, <laughs> and, and 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 then at one point he went, "And soon, soon I'll know all the lines, and I won't need them at all." <laughs> and I just thought that was. <laughs> Reminded me of the scene in Extras where he says the same thing, which is, <laughs> that was a real joy for me, that moment. Thank you so much for bringing this film to Toronto. We're so proud to present it. Congratulate them, please, on a wonderful film. Thank you all so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.